afternoon. Well, we entitled this, this presentation as Enhanced Performance of Acoustic Wave Filters. Uh, just if we, if we see the previous presentation, we, we will see that um, in this case, the, the technology that we are, we are using for developing filters is, is completely different. And, and actually, those filters are, are only just a few mil square millimeters. So those are, are really small. And you also will see when we present the, the synthesis of the mathemat or the mathematical formulation that, that the way those filters are, are, are created are not based on, on the basic coupling or by coupling resonators, right? Or, or at least not, not the, the way we know those resonators. Another thing we, we would like to say before starting is that um, this work has been done uh, along with, with Corvo for the past four, four years. So let us start with this first slide. This first slide essentially shows um, where we're using those filters. Actually, those filters are the filters that we all have in our um, cellular phones. And, and this acoustic technology is used for covering pretty much of the all the frequencies below two gigahertz. This is done using the the call um, soft filters or surface acoustic wave filters, and it's also is covering all the frequencies above two gigahertz by using this the bulk configuration, which is bulk acoustic wave filters. So so the, this 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 picture um, essentially just is saying that it, this has been a key technology for the developing of all the handset devices that we are all, all using, right? So th the question would be what would happen in the future, right? In, in the, in the, on that um, full deployment of the 5G technology and, 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 and 4G technology. So, so will be those filters still playing this, this this big role, or, or in the other hand, will be the bottleneck for the expansion of, of, of the, the new, the new standards. And in our opinion, the, the, the answer is easy. As long as those filters can still provide the, or, or achieve the, the, the electrical requirements, the, this technology will be still um, dri driving the. The, the expansion of, of, of wireless applications, and, and mainly because of this, the, the extremely compact size, right? But to, to be able to do that, those, those filters will need to, to be able to, to achieve or to be performing in complex fil filtering stages as multiplexers, right? They also will need to give response to the, the, the carrier aggregation uh, scenarios, and, and of course, they, they, they need to offer coexistence. And, and that means that they, they have to, in a single device, we, we need to have more than 40 filters. And they all have to operate without detrimental of, of interferences between them. And, and also, it's, it's very important that to see how this technology um, responds to the new spectrum development. So, so far, this technology is it's clearly dominating all the spectrum below 3 gigahertz. But we have to see how this responds to frequencies above three gigahertz and, and even above six, six gigahertz. So um, in our opinion, is what, what we need to, to push this, this technology um, or, or to, to, to get the maximum of, of those filters. So what we need is first a proper mathematical representation of of the current or the most common f um, filter configurations. We also need a, a systematic procedure for the synthesis. So this is um, the way we go from the mathematical formulation to the, to the final filter, final topology, and, and also to, to have a software tool that, that will make easy all, all this way, right? But in addition, to that, we, we think that we also need to provide novel filter configurations. This is a n new filter topologies that can um, give even better responses than the ones we can achieve right now with the conventional 
M topologies, right? So before, before that, then, let, let, let us introduce a little bit what's an acoustic resonator, right? And here we present just uh, outline the acoustic resonators in, in a ball configuration, which is bulk acoustic wave. That's essentially could be, that's a top electrode, that's a bottom electrode, and that's a piezoelectric material where the, the acoustic waves um, propagates or resonates, right? And, and that's the version on its, its saw con configuration, right? And if we, if we could see that, this will be just, just, just a, a, a ten of millimeter, right? Just very, very small. If we look to the response of, of that resonator, we'll see that the impedance of that resonator has a, a frequency with that um, impedance is minimum and the frequency where that impedance is maximum. And um, um, we can see um, already that th this is different that we, we have in, in, in conventional re resonators, right? And, and essentially this these two resonant frequencies that, that we have um, are defined from the parameter that we call the electro electroacoustic coupling, right? And essentially defines the spacing between these, these two frequencies. We will see later in the presentation that the, the, the actual response of, of the filters strong, strongly depends on this electroacoustic um, coupling coefficient. And at the same time, this electroacoustic coupling coefficient depends a lot of on, on the on the materials. So um, if we want to build any filter response, we either need to find materials where this um, electroacoustic coupling can can be controlled, so or changed, or on the other hand we need to find topologies where the filter response um, does not depend on the on the electroacoustic coupling coefficient. Right? And that's that's the, the topology that we will present at the very end of the presentation, right? Something that we also need to know for, for the synthesis of those filters is to know how is the, the equivalent circuit of, of a resonator, right? And the equivalent circuit of uh, an acoustic resonator, usually it's, it's modeled by the so-called BVD circuit, circuit model. And, and you, you already can see here, right, that, that that's a big difference between the conventional resonator, which will be, for instance, an LC, or and we are here we have a, a, a static capacitance C, right? And for instance, in that case, it's very clear for these two parallel plates. So now our basic building block will be uh, a topology like, like, like that, right? Also, as, as we do in, in, in conventional filters, well, when we say conventional, we, we mean non-acoustic um, filters. Um, we also n usually work in the low pass prototype, and in that case, we will do the same, right? Um, that's, as we said, that's the the basic building block of our resonator. Actually, th that's an equivalent circuit, so that means that these two circuits give exactly the same response. So we, we can work with any of those those resonators, right? And from those, we we create the the low pass prototype, right? And we create these this two low-pass prototype, well, depending of the initial equivalent circuit. But it's also worth to mention at this point that this low-pass prototype actually does not give exactly the same response than the band-pass prototype. And that's also something different that, that we have in conventional filters. And the main difference if we plot the, the frequency response is that the, the resonator performance um, has different rejection or behavior out of band, right? So here there's the difference between the, this could be the, the blue line good corresponds to the low pass prototype and the black line good corresponds to the band pass prototype. And see, we, here we can see uh, a difference, right? And at the end, it, this will result that the, the, the initial response in the low pass prototype will be different than, than the one we implement in the band pass prototype, right? But as also we'll see that we, we usually can, can tolerate those differences. There's also difference in, in that inner region of the, of the resonator, right? In the region between the two resonant frequencies. And th this also affects when we have very wide band, band filters, right? 
So, and, but in any case, any of those um, basic building blocks will be represented in as, as, as conventionally done in, a, in, acoustic, in acoustic filter this, this way. Okay, so as we say, let's start to see um, how we can get the, the best filter performance from the conventional topology. So if, if you take one of your cellar phones and you just go and check one of the filters that's inside, you probably will see a filter topology like, like this one, right? This is um, uh, an acoustic um, filter. Each of those are as, as small acoustic resonators. As you can see, this is very small. And, and it, if you check the electrical connection, you, you could see that, that the topology of this filter, it follows something something like that right and this is this is actually that's a, a a ladder a ladder topology right so in that case if each of the resonators are electrically connected to each other without uh, making any coupling be between between them right so let, let's see how how these um ladder filters work before proposing a mathematical formulation from those right so here will have actually a frequency response, right? Um, and along with the impedance of the shunt resonators in red and the impedance of the serial resonators in, in blue, right? Actually, if, you, if we check to the, to the shunt resonators, when you have very low impedance here, right? So it's creating a zero because and the signal is not going through, it's going to to ground, right? And then if we move to the um, band pass of the filter, we can see that in that case we have uh, um, zero impedance for the serial resonators and a very high impedance for the shunt resonators. So all the thing, the signal goes, goes through. And if we hope to the upper sideband, we'll see that the, those transmission zeros are actually created but these high impedances of the of the serious resonators, right? And and this actually verifies what we said verifies what we said before that the the filter performance is is defined by by each of the resonators and by those resonant frequencies and actually by the coupling coefficient, which is um, the electrocoupling coefficient actually, which is the difference between that those frequencies and and those frequencies here so so but uh, as as we can see here now the the low impedance um, sections of the shunt resonators create transmission zeros at the lower set band and the high impedance region of the serial resonators create the, the transmission zeros at the upper side band so fr from that we can already propose a mathematical formulation and Something that you can state is that in a acoustic filter following a ladder configuration, right, the, the number of transmission zeros should be equal than the number of resonators, right? And we also know that the, if the order of the filter is, is odd and we start with series, the number of transmission zeros at the upper side band should be um, higher, actually one more than in the lower side band. And if it starts with, with Shan, it's in the other way around. And of course, if it's even, the number of transmission zeros at the upper set band and at the lower set band are, are the same. And it's also true that the position of those transmission zeros, as we said before, depends on, on the coupling coefficient. And, and it can be, cannot be pre-inscribed by, by the designer in, in advance, right? But in any case, all these conditions, right, can be formulating using a, a general Chebyshev polynomials. So we can create general Chebyshev polynomials with um, where the number of transmission zeros is equal to the number of resonators, and they are um, distributed along both sides of, of the filter, right? And when we know how to formulate this, the, the next step is just to propose a synthesis procedure and the synthesis procedure that we propose is to just to use um, the element extraction approach which 
actually it's also quite conventional, although it's not is not very used when we work with with coupling filters. And with the extraction element, the only thing we need to do is we start with the characteristic polynomials. In that case, as we said, there are Chebyshev. We we get the the s parameters from these characteristic polynomials, and, and from those we can get the the input impedance of the filter. And then from that input impedance, we can just start to to remove some sections to create the different parts of the resonator. And for instance, in that case, what we will do is initially we will start the first section of the resonator just to create that transmission zero, right, for instance. Or actually we do have flexibility here so we can decide if we extract that transmission zeros or that transmission zeros or that transmission zeros. Depending the way we do the extraction, we will obtain different, different topologies, right? But there's no much flexibility, right? Because usually, as we said, the position of transmission zeros can not be arbitrarily transcribed, right? And the, the, the element extraction procedure could continue, right? So from the following section up to the next section uh, until we, we get all the different sections, right? And we can see that those correspond to the low pass prototypes of a, each basic building block, right? So just just following that that approach, we can actually get some kind of, of recipe and that allow us to 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 perform the, the synthesis of of those ladder acoustic filters, right? And the fact of having a, a mathematical person um, representation of these polynomials is going to be very useful because we, we could create um, the synthesis and the design of a new filter, so it will be new specs with, with just a just few hours, right? And to complement this, we, we develop uh, a software tool, right, that, that will help us to, to perform the synthesis of, of any filter, right? So, uh, as any software tool or, or GUI, um, we have here, um, should the, could be the, the input parameters where we get the order of the filter, also the, the bandwidth, central frequency, return losses, and also the position of, of transmission, transmission zeros, you will see here. Um, just always based, based in a general Chebyshev response, right? Um, also, we can um, modify the, the reflection zeros, so with that could be we could modify the position of these guys here. So we will lose the the equal ripple response, but but this might be very helpful helpful on 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 the way we we tune the the electrocoupling coefficient of each of those resonators, right? The the software tool also has the the ability to to include some parasitic inductances, right, or ground inductances, which is something that you, you always have in, in these acoustic filters, and you always need to connect your, your resonators to, to, the, to the laminate. And, and the fact of having this tool is very useful because um, this helps you to tune the position of transmission zeros, and it's also useful to place transmission zeros and um, very far from the from the central frequency of of the resonators that you 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 could not get it um, without those inductors, right? And um, then when we get all the input parameters, and um, the software will offer all the candidates, right? So, so it will offer all the possible topologies that that synthesize that that response here, right? And and as we said before, that flexibility could be on the way we extract those position or those transmission zeros, right? When we have the synthesis, we could also then modify the, the position or, or the values of the circuit elements. So we could change the, the values of the coupling coefficients, the values of the inductances, um, or even the values of the resonant frequencies of the different resonators and see how this affects the, the, the response. Um, we also can include losses, right? And 
we can get the parameters, we can also include um, lateral modes. We didn't talk about that, but those small resonators usually have some, some undesired um, resonant frequency due to lateral modes that can be, has also a circuit representation and can be evaluated here afterwards. Um, we can also um, use that tool to create um, um, multiplexers, right? That's a tool that allows you to, to include new filters. And um, by changing the polynomials, you can change the phase of those, of those filters, so it can help to, to, to get the, the proper matching network. And we can also use, to, use that tool to analyze the, the nonlinear effects of that occur in, in acoustic filters, right? All these points are summarized in the next slide, so we want to skip that, that slide here. And so we, we pretty much show the mathematical formulation, the synthesis approach, and, this, and the software tool. And now we'll show you um, just, just two examples on how we can use this mathematical formulation to, um, to get the maximum of, of, that, of those topologies, right? And here, this first example, it corresponds to a very wide band filter. It's, it's over 200 megahertz, which is something not very common in, in acoustic filters. And sometimes to create those filter responses using a ladder configuration, you need a very high order filter. You will can see here that this, this filter is a, it's an order 11. So it has 11 resonators. And here we show the response. Here shows the response of the of the characteristic polynomials along with, with also the, the response of the, the AWR um, cir circuit model of those resonators, right? And we, as I said, we can use that, that tool or the, the, that formulation to create multiplexers and, and that's the, the example that we show here. here that's a quadplexer um, that just, just to give you an example, that quadplexer could, could be using that tool could be synthesized, pretty much in in in, in one in one day, right? Including all all the the matching networks, and you can see the high number of resonators that we are using here, right? But at this point, it's, it's also worth to emphasize that. Um, the fact of having this mathematical formulation and the synthesis approach, it's, it's, it's been very, very helpful to, to get the, the, the filter responses um, very, very fast, right? Well, in spite of that, the, that topology, right, this ladder topology has some, some intrinsic limitations, right, that we, we've been mentioning, right, but we'll, we'll recall here. Um, one of the limitations is that the filter bandwidth is usually limited by the electroacoustic coupling coefficients, right? And when you need to go to very wide band filters, you need to, to include a lot of, of resonators, which also include the losses, right, at, at, at the end. And we have, we have also seen that the position of transmission zeros depends on these two resonant frequencies that has each resonator, and that therefore it depends on, on on the coupling coefficient. Another intrinsic limitation is that the number of transmission zeros at the upper side band and lower side band has to be um, pretty much the same. And that's, that's good when you want sharp rejection at both sides, but, but not, that's not always the, the case. So you cannot implement any, any, any response, right? Also, using that configuration is, is not possible, or at least it's not a straightforward to get multiband filter or phase equalize filters, right? And at the end, um, we, we don't have flexibility um, on selecting the, the circuit parameters of, of the synthesized response. And this is mainly because this electrocoupling coefficient depends on the material, also af strongly affects the coupling. So if we want to go to, to higher coupling coefficients, usually we have a lot of We'll, we will lose the the the, cop, the the quality factor, and also it changes a lot on the op operation operation frequency, right? So, um, the next part of the presentation will show uh, 
a new configuration where um, the filter response does not depend on, on this coupling coefficient, right? And, and the benefits that we will get is that we essentially can create any, any filter response, right? So yeah, well, that's, that's what we say here. And that, that topology is that what we call the transversal acoustic topology, right? And you can see here that in that case, all the resonators are not um, arranged in a ladder way, but now they are arranged in a, in a transversal way. And the, the final filter response is created by, by the contribution of all these different paths, right? It could be like a, like a, 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 fil a filter bank, right? And, and just to, to verify um, the benefits of that, that new topology here, we show, for instance, uh, uh, three two-order filters right and um, these filters are of different bandwidth the blue one is corresponds to 50 megahertz the black one corresponds to 100 megahertz and the red one corresponds to 200 me megahertz right and we can see that just by using two resonators we we can create these wideband responses we can also see that this filter response has no transmission zeros so I this increases the rejections far from the resonant frequency. And we can also see that the coupling coefficient, that if you remember the coupling coefficient dep depends on the separation between the two resonant frequencies, is exactly the same for all cases, right? And it actually it's 6.5%, which is a, a, conventional, a conventional number, right? So this, this actually verifies um the, the the goal of this of this topology right that the filter response that not depends on the coupling coefficient another example here it could be it's a, that's a filter of it's uh, 100 megahertz or 150 megahertz and one is created with an order two uh, filter which would be the black one and the other it's created with an order um, four filter which is the red one in all cases, um, the coupling coefficient is exactly the, the same, right? And the only difference is the, the impedance that we need of these resonators. And, and of course, for the four-order filter, the rejection is, is, is higher, right? Five minutes, okay, fine. So, well, a new example, which I, we think is also very illustrative here, we show the, the frequency response of a two-order filter which has been synthesized using resonators with dif different coupling coefficient, right? The red one could correspond to 6.3% and the black one corresponds to 9.5%. And we can see that both responses overlap um, fairly, fairly good. And Actually, if we plot the low pass prototype, they will overlap perfectly, right? But since, as we said at the very beginning, um, there's, there's a slight difference between the, the band pass prototype and the low pass prototype, then this is why we get that, that difference here. But this allows us to conclude that um, the filter response not, does not depend on, on, the, on the coupling coefficient, right? So, in addition to the to the filter responses that we can get, there's also some other additional advantages, and one of those is is the synthesis procedure. Actually, the synthesis procedure is much simpler in that case than in the case that we're using element extraction. And and for that, we will be very very brief on that. But and essentially, this the synthesis procedure starts by proposing any characteristic polynomial. So now we have no restriction on the mathematical representation of those filters. We can propose any filter response, and th this is res very wide band responses, multi-band responses, or responses with symmetric transmission zeros, equalized filters, anything. And from these S parameters, we, we get the Y matrix, then apply partial fraction expansion, and actually 
this um, help us to obtain um, a transversal configuration of a filter. But uh, here there, we, we should mention that actually this transversal representation corresponds to conventional resonator, not acoustic resonator, right? And those lines correspond to, to couplings, right? Not electrical connections, which is something that we, we don't have in our, in our topology. So now we need to go from, from that topology to the transversal topology. But um, what this is saying is saying that um, this transversal topology can be used to represent a, any, any field of response. And so um, the way to transform this into acoustic filters is just to take that topology we can take one of those paths, and if we go to the equivalent circuit, we, we will see that here these two lines are the couplings, and this corresponds to the resonators, right? What we could do is we can add um, additional path, so direct couplings between the input and the and the output, right? And we can add as many um, direct um, paths as we want, as long as they cancel out. So, right? So, and this says that we, the, the value of this cross-coupling here could be any value, right? And this is decided by the designer, right? And now if, if we re represent all this path, we'll see that this could correspond to the direct path for, from the resonator and also the direct cross-coupling, and we can apply some transformations to that, and we can see that, uh, we'll go to next slide, and we can see that this is the, the low pass prototype. So finally, the overall transformation will give us the topologies that, that we said before, right? And as we said, this value here, which I, it's actually related with the cross coupling or with, sorry, with the electrocoupling coefficient is, is prescribed by, by the designer, right? So we can um, propose any, any value for any response, right? So now that we know how to obtain that topology, we'll show some examples, right? As we said, this, we can obtain multi-band responses. This, for instance, this is a dual band response. We can also obtain um, um, very wide band responses. This is 200 megahertz, which is achieved with only six order filters, which is something we cannot achieve with ladder filters. Uh, with a symmetric distribution of the transmission zeros, and we can also obtain predistal responses, self-equalized responses, and, and we also have some trimming um, or tunability that we can apply to, to those filters. And um, more examples are that one show here. This corresponds to an actual response, this or other on actual filter specifications. This is a B41 response, which is also to 200 megahertz, and also achieved with only six order filter, right? This helps a lot actually to the insertion losses, right? And the last example we here, we just saw show a, a, a multi a multi band response. We, so we can connect 30 resonators and of any cross coupling and and obtain these this, this nice responses where we can control the, the, the inner bar rejection. So we think we can then conclude that this, this new topology that we propose can, can create any type of response. This is multiband, equalized responses, or use also for creating multiplexers. Um, the bandwidth is not dominated by the coupling coefficient. Um, the coupling coefficient, therefore, is, is set by, by, by the designer. And we can place the transmission zeros um, wherever we want, right? This, this means close to the passband or also very far from the, from the passband, right? And some other additional conclusions as that we have not show, show here that is that we can also have flexibility on, on selecting the, the impedance of the resonator, so the area of the resonators and, and also the, the resonant frequencies. So that's pretty much it. So any questions? Thank you very much. Yeah.